Hybrid cars are slow and sensible, right? Well, no, not according to Mugen, which was largely responsible for the creation of this V6 powered hybrid monster. This is the Honda CRZ GT300. In 2012, Honda essentially snuck up on Toyota and revealed its brand new GT300 hybrid car to take on the equally new GT300 Prius in the Super GT Championship. Two of Japan's biggest car makers battling it out to see who has the best best hybrid racing car. We've already taken a look at the Toyota and you can see that video in the link that we've just put up there. But now let's take a look at the Honda. I should point out that in this class it's not just these two cars. GT300 at the time was open to FIA GT3 cars, cars like the Prius and CRZ, and frankly some odd cars classified as others. Uh, we'll get to those. Oh and it is Z not Z. Don't at me on that one. Right with that out of the way let's get on with the engineering. The CRZ was the world's first mass market hybrid sports car. It had been created with the design objective of being fun to drive and being a sports car without guilt, a reference to its hybrid technology. Whether this truly is a sports car or not is a bit of a debate, but I guess the GT300 version of this sports compact car would be the racing car without guilt. Honda decided, possibly after finding out about the Prius GT300, that it too wanted to race a hybrid car in Super GT. So it tasked its longtime performance partner, Mugen, sometimes called MTEC, with developing a new car. The new car would be built to the Japan Auto Federation, JAF, GT300 regulations, which meant that at least some of the production car would have to be used in the construction of this racing car. And by some, I mean not very much at all. The upper portion of the cabin section of the production car was retained, including some of the front bulkhead and most of the roof. The rest was all replaced by a tubular chassis and composite body panels. You can see some of that bodywork preparation process going on in these pictures here from the team at Mugen. The JAF GT300 regulations also stated that the car must use an engine produced by the same manufacturer that made the chassis. So Honda had complete freedom with their entire range of power units and it opted to use a proven endurance racing design, the HR28TT. That's a 2.8 litre twin turbo V6 which had been raced extensively in the LMP2 category. Indeed, this same engine powered the car which won the LMP2 category at the Le Mans 24 hours in 2012, fitted to a derivative of the rolling identity crisis which started life as the Courage LC70. This engine's actually really, really interesting. It's a true production-based design. It's based, in fact, on the Honda J35 V6 engine. Yeah, that's the engine used in the Odyssey minivan. Yeah, Honda used the engine from a minivan at Le Mans and won. It. The engine used in the CRZ GT300 did retain the production based block and the cylinder head, the throttle system and even a stock oil filter, though as you would expect Honda had reworked everything very thoroughly. As the JAF GT300 regulations did not state where in the car the engine should be mounted, Mugen opted to adopt a mid-engine layout with the CRZ GT300, with the V6 driving the rear wheels via a sequential transmission from Ricardo. That transmission had to be modified to accommodate the MGUK, that's what we call it these days anyway, the electric motor, from the hybrid system, as the base model CRZ was a hybrid, so the GT300 version had to be as well. However, where APR used production car-based components to build its racing hybrid system in the Toyota Prius, Mugen and Honda opted to use a dedicated motorsport system. The hybrid system used in the CRZ GT300 was supplied by British company Zytec, and it was in reality a very close descendant of the system the company had developed to use in the 2009 McLaren Formula 1 car. And while that was a 60 kilowatt system, the GT300 version was scaled down to be a 50 kilowatt system, though it was usually only run at 32 kilowatts. The battery and inverter were mounted in the passenger footwell, while the motor attached to the side of the Ricardo transmission, as I mentioned. When the car was first launched, Mugen and Honda were very reluctant to discuss the hybrid system in any detail whatsoever. The reasons later became clear. Not only was Honda developing a version of the system to use in its forthcoming GT500 NSX to race in Super GT, but the company was also starting to of its 2009 
its new Formula One power unit. The CLZ reportedly was used to test components for at least the GT500 system, and that growth in hybrid system knowledge was fed directly into the Formula One program. The person in charge of the CLZ project was Junichi Kumakura, who had the wonderfully long job title of Chief Engineer of the Third Section Motorsport Business Department at Mugen. He explained to me uh, when the car was racing that one reason that a front engine CLZ was not really an option for the GT300 car was that it wasn't really possible to fit the 2.8 litre twin turbo engine underneath the short and heavily curved bonnet of the production car. That was only designed to house a 1.5 litre four cylinder motor. It's probably just coincidence then that from a race car layout perspective a mid-engine layout is far more desirable anyway. There was some discussion initially of using the larger GT500 specification 3.4 litre normally aspirated V8 engine which at the time was being used in the HSV 010 GT500 car. Another interesting machine that again we're going to have to come back to. That V8 engine though was found to be simply too big for the CRZ. Even the 2.8 litre minivan based V6 engine that raced at Le Mans was still a very tight squeeze into the back of the dimensions of that sports compact chassis. What chassis was left of it anyway. This very tight packaging made cooling a significant challenge for the Honda and Mugen engineers and that was a major driving force in the bodywork design and the aerodynamic package of the car. At its launch the car featured some fairly tight cooling ducts on either side but at some tracks these would be opened up to improve that cooling flow. Additionally at some venues a cooling duct was added to the roof. The suspension system was relatively conventional but it had to be packaged around the very tight engine bay at the rear with the inboard dampers mounted just above the transmission while at the front spring and damper units are mounted just above the pushrod mounting point on the front of the tubular section of the chassis. The car's development was incredibly quick and I think that came as a result of Honda probably reacting to the unexpected arrival of the Prius in the GT300 category and there was no real time as a result to develop the shape of the CLZ in the wind tunnel. While Honda has extensive aerodynamic capabilities in including a full-scale Formula 1 specification wind tunnel in Japan, at the time it was relying on Dome to do most of its Super GT aerodynamic development. With no time to get to the full-scale wind tunnel or even get a model built to run at Dome, the Mugen engineers and the Honda engineers had to rely on their experience and some of that came over from developing the GT500 cars at the time the NSX was in development and of course they were racing the HSV 010. So really it really was a bit of trial and error to start the bodywork design and there was a lot of bodywork to design. As the CLZ production car was really quite small to start with, the GT300 bodywork had to be quite extensive. The regulations had a maximum width of just under 2 meters, but the production CLZ was only 1740 millimeters wide. It was a similar situation with the Prius of course, but that car started out being 5 millimeters wider than the CLZ to start with. This resulted in the CLZ having a very flared body style. That notably increased the frontal area of the car which came with a penalty in terms of aerodynamic drag but the team hoped that it would also significantly boost downforce levels. As you would expect the car featured a flat bottom with a wide and high rear wing for downforce generation. The diffuser at the rear looks at least in the initial versions somewhat lower and less detailed than that of the Prius. There was also extensive work as you'd expect on the front splitter and front dive planes appeared at the front end of the car as well. The small size of the CRZ production car had some other implications for the GT300 car as well. The regulations allowed for the wheelbase to be extended by 5% over the base model, which allowed Mugen to add 122mm to the car, but this was still 150mm shorter than the Prius. As a result, it was found that the CRZ was not as good in fast corners as the Prius, but it had an advantage in slow speed corners, such as the final sector at Fuji Speedway, and it was at Fuji Speedway way where the car scored its first podium in only its third race. It finished one place behind the Prius. In 2013, a second Mugen CRZ was entered into the Super GT Championship in the GT300 category. It was run by Aguri Suzuki's Arta Autobax team. The cars had both been upgraded somewhat and the pace was significantly improved. In fact, the number 55 Arta car scored two wins, though was a bit inconsistent through the rest of the season, while the number 16 Works Mugen car only scored a single win but had four runner-up finishes through the year, meaning that it won the 
the championship overall. 2014 was less of a success. Honda's attention had shifted to the new NSX GT500 and the CRZ only won a single race. FIA GT3 cars took the top four spots in the championship. In 2015, which was the last season for the CRZ GT300, Mugen withdrew from GT300 altogether, leaving just the Arta Autobax car in the championship where it finished sixth, with a single win. For the 2016 Super GT season, a new rule was being introduced for JAF GT300 cars, which stated that from that season onwards, the cars would have to have engines located in the same position as they were located in the production car. The mid-engine CRZ would in theory no longer be legal, and for it to continue, Mugen would have to have essentially developed a completely new car. It didn't, and Honda didn't have any interest in funding a new GT300 car at that point anyway, because it was already well underway in developing a new FIA GT3 car. Of course, the story of the mid-engined hybrid GT300 cars doesn't actually end here with that rule change, but that literally is another story, which we are again going to be covering. So if you have enjoyed this unexpectedly long tale of a compact car with a minivan engine that raced at Le Mans and then won a championship in Super GT in Japan and was put in a different position in a completely different model, then don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I'll see you somewhere soon in the pit lane.